Hi, we're back at the Meyer studio today. Anyway, as I promised, we're going to do a short, just a little quick study of the pansy flowers. And aren't these cute from the yard? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. One of the things I wanted to show you is that we have two candom yellow deeps. One's by Gamblin, one's by Winsor Newton. As you can see on my palette, one's a lot richer and darker than the other one. So uh, I kind of use both and it helps me get that flow going of the pansy. One of the things I did use was a little bit of walnut oil to kind of put on my canvas. I designed it out by putting it into force to know where I wanted to place my beautiful little pansy right here, the back pansy, and then we have a little pansy falling over. I used just a little bit of the uh, French ultramarine blue and transparent brown, and I can draw in my little pansies here. Now you notice we have a cute little uh, blue and white dish, which is kind of the offside of um, the yellow. So blue and yellows always go together. It's kind of like the French always say. Anyway, let's start off by using just a little bit of our uh, cadmium yellow deep with some of our transparent gold. And I love, this is one of my favorite colors, is the um, transparent orange. Oh my gosh, it's by Gamblin and it is just gorgeous. So now I'm looking at the shadow side down here and I see that that needs to go there and maybe a little greener on this other side over here where it's in a shadow pattern. So let me put that in and I'm going to paint in all these beautiful little shadow patterns before I ever get started with putting any kind of detail onto those pansies. I'm just going to do this one thing. The little fold over leaf in the back is, you know, designer's choice. You can add that in or not. But now I'm picking up my other cad yellow deep and my cad yellow medium light here. And I'm going to just work right into the top of that, not obliterating what I've already put on there. Plus, maybe pick up just a little bit of that green on this edge over here. I'm seeing that right in there. And let's just work a little bit of that in. We're already seeing our cute little pansy. I'm using some rosemary brushes, which I absolutely love. And this is a rosemary ivory long flat. And uh, it's like I tell my students, um, you know, it's not a pencil drawing, it is a painting drawing. So I love these long handles by Rosemary. So now I picked up a little bit of my lemon yellow. And boy, this little guy's already bouncing right up, isn't he? Look at that. So let's add just a touch of Viridian into that color, just to give it a little more interest, maybe right here, and to cool it down as it turns back around that little edge. And again, it's right over here peeking out. Maybe we want to do that. So now we've got that little pansy. I'm going to do the back of that other one up here using those same mixtures. Again, this is dark. This is in the shadow side right here. And then we're going to mix and maybe pull up some of this. As you notice, I haven't put in any of my background yet. I'm kind of saving that so I can carve in the flowers just a little bit better. And boy, this guy over here, he's kind of dull and he's not, she's not the queen of the party, that's for sure. So I picked up a little touch of um, yellow ochre pale with my transparent orange and maybe a touch of magenta. And I'm trying to make just a little brown over here. As you can see, that's my darker color and it's my undertone. So I'm gonna kinda just kinda make that and maybe I'll add, since this one's got kind of an ugly little edge on it up here, let's just add a little interest because we want to continue those same colors throughout the painting. And since we're going to do this, and let's just so we can show the direction there, what's going to happen. So now I can come back using some of that great Neo McGip we introduced in the previous video and maybe add just a little touch of white to dull this down because as I tell my students, white is color killer. And we'll come back over here and just maybe add just a little bit of that dullness to this flower. And it has a little shootout edge that's coming this way. And so I kind of look for all those little interesting things that make that flower of interest. Now see how that already has made that flower kind of stand out on its own and maybe make that just a little bit lighter here on the edge. We'll add the greenery here in a minute. But again, let's go back and maybe pick up some of that to kind of dull that down. 
and go back over the edge of this just a little bit to make that the shadow side of that flower. Again, we're looking for that shadow side and thing. You notice I haven't cleaned my brush at all yet. And we just keep wiping it off. Wonderful Viva paper towels. Thank you very much. And hopefully they're still available in your local stores. I've always bought them by the case, so it's kind of a, a nice little deal for me. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of soften some of those edges, bring them out, kind of play with that just a little bit, just to kind of give it a little more interest. So let's pick up a clean brush and a smaller brush. It's a Rosemary 2 flat, and I'm going to pick up some of my French Ultramarine Blue, and along with that wonderful transparent orange I told you about earlier, and let's put in his little back stem and give it a little thing. Just those couple of little deals, wow, what a difference that makes. Again, we're gonna connect this in, and that really starts showing that flower pretty quick. So let's give it a little more interest with a stem here and a little bit lighter stem. Now we can come down and pick up a little bit more yellow, maybe just a touch of Viridian in that to, to uh, cool it off and make it a little more interesting. Now I've got these beautiful little green leaf things, whatever those are, whatever you call them. I'm sure flower people know. And I'm just going to loosely put in, suggest some of that to my flowers. Maybe pick up for this one that's a little more in the light, a little bit more something, something there. Well, I see just a tiny little green center back down there in the back. And on that side, it's shadowed. So now, boy, did that just kind of jump up and give that guy a personality. Now I need some dirt. So let's pick up some French Ultramarine Blue along with some transparent red oxide and put some dirt in there. Maybe a little bit more with a little bit of Neo Gift because I want to keep this a little more transparent than what it is. And then it's going to have some leaves. So I don't want it quite as dark. The values are changing. Let me put in just a little bit of that and then kind of come up here around this for my little vase. And we're going to bring the leaves over. So now we have the opportunity to bring some of these gorgeous little leaves up in here and see how these are already starting. I'm using previous mixtures. Maybe add in just a little bit of King's Blue into that. And if any of you are wondering what colors I use on my palette, you can go to www.patmeyer-artist.com and I actually have all those colors right on my website, even laid out in a palette organizational. So you can get that uh, without much trouble. Just go for that. And I'm just kind of carving in around these right now. I can now come back with some Viridian and my Cad Yellow Medium and add a little bit of interest maybe on this leaf and this leaf which is in the light. See how that kind of makes that one a little more interesting. And you're already starting to see all the pansies. Well, I know you guys are wanting to see, well, how do you put in that little throat on the pansy? So let's mix up some um, I'm going to take this wonderful Ellipse Clomer 3 8 inch by Rosemary again. I love her brushes. And let's use some French Ultramarine Blue and some um, Alizarin Crimson and maybe a touch of Magenta in there. And you get just one little stroke of this. Now this is the darker side, so let's put that in. Wipe my brush clean. Get in up here again at the throat. Wipe my brush clean. That didn't quite pick up everything I needed it to, so wipe my brush clean. And again, here's this little pansy. Oh my gosh, how fun is this? And my little hairs are separating, so kind of mix that up a little bit. If you need to, pick up just a little bit of Neo Magip and wiggle those brushes. Again, clean it off. Maybe I need a little more paint. Paint is our friend. And there we go. We have a cute little pansy. Okay, so I'm going to put that brush down. I'm going to go back to maybe making some um, background color. So let me pick up some French Ultramarine Blue and some um, transparent brown. A little bit of my Neo Magip. 
maybe some of this red color I had in there, and I'm going to start by making just a fun little wash of background. Now again, this is my opportunity to kind of carve in. Maybe I'll pick up some Viridian this time into that brown, just to give myself a little bit of uh, interest here. And we can already start seeing how this pansy is going to look. And again, you want to keep it loose and fresh. And Viridian, transparent brown, you can see how dark I can get with that. And I move around and maybe right here under the shadow, I want to trim that up just a little bit. Again, this guy is my focal, so I want the darkest dark and the lightest light near each other. So there you go on that. I can come back and I want to get my direction of light flowing now. And so maybe I pick up a little white and a little more blue and kind of get a directional flow of light and shadow. Maybe I want to warm it up just a little bit, so I might add just a little bit of my reds in there just to balance that off. And again, this gives me an opportunity to carve around and get some interest going. But you can see how fast we can move um, with this. Now, I might need to come back and add a little bit of my violets in here just to balance off this yellow. We'll bring these together in just a minute. So don't get worried. Don't get upset. You can always step back and see how things are progressing. i walk that out maybe a little bit better. And then over here, maybe it's a little more of a shadow pattern. I can see the shadow falling on the table. If you look right over here, you'll be able to see the shadow. So I want to illustrate that down past the little um, thing there. But again, I want to keep it loose. I want this to be a fun little funky painting that we had fun with. And maybe we add some balance of colors against these here to give some light flow. But you're seeing now how quickly, again, it comes together. So at this point, I can take a little more transparent red oxide and, and greens and put in my darks here where I'm keeping that flow of light going, like my little shadows are being cast here underneath these flowers. Walk that out and up here. And I got to figure out where is my tabletop going to go. Maybe it's going to go right in here. Okay. So with that be said, let's add a couple of more little leaves to this program. And when I'm in doubt, I hold it right up to the leaf and say, yep, that's pretty much the color. So I'm just going to mush that around and pull it up. And because I already had that other leaf there, I can kind of work those out. Now, if I want a darker leaf in over here, I can do that as I stay there. Now I've lost my little stem that came around here, my beautiful little stem. So let's add that back in and its little top part. So as you push and pull things, sometimes you lose um, what's going on. Let's get in this cute little vase here. And we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that today. We can do this at another time on another video to really show how to do vases, th see through glass, whatever it is that you want to accomplish. I'm going to add just a little bit of that red in there so I can keep this on the warm, warmer side as I come across. And maybe I, I see a shadow here under the leaf pattern and I see a shadow right over here. But now I want to pick up a little bit of white as I come across, and maybe this is, maybe a little bit of that wonderful transparent orange to kind of keep those colors a little more interesting, a little warmer, so it turns the corner there. I can go back and add these in. Again, people say, how do you do a painting in 30 minutes? Well. I don't think we've been on this one very long. I might pick up a little bit of this green, a little bit of my King's Blue and put in this one. So now I've got a little bit of that leaf pattern showing over the top. And here we go. So now we've, we've already got the light flow of this face. Little rims coming across here. 
I see that light flow. That gave me great light, right? And now I've got to go back and get my little shadow pattern under here and kind of meld those together. And maybe over here the shadow pattern is a little bit more. So just keep thinking, light and shadow, where can I work this? Now I, now I can come back and put one of my beautiful little green leaves right over the top of that to break the plane. Might use some French ultramarine blue along with my uh, green medium there, maybe a little more blue in it because I see that blue a little cooler right there. Maybe a little bit darker. It's picking up some of that undertone now, but you can see now how that added some interest. And we can come back in, maybe add a little something on top and make it a little cooler on the edge. Okay, so I'm starting to get happy with this. It's already feeling good. I'm moving right along. Let's pull down this tabletop right there to show, ooh, there's a neat light flow throwing through there. And maybe over here a little bit of light flow. Um, I'll put that in with my other color, my yellow now. I'll mix that in. And look how this, because I married the colors together, we've got a cute little painting that didn't take very long. Maybe we'll put a little purple there to bring those two together. We went back and picked up some of that purple center stuff right there. And that helped put some cast shadows there. And maybe now I need to mix up some more of my blue, French ultramarine blue, my transparent uh, brown, and kind of carve this in. Just, I'm not real happy about that. But I'm starting to get happier. And this green maybe is just a little bit the value of that might just need to be a little more tucked in. This I might need to just pick up and add that corner back in there again to show that pattern of that. And hopefully we're almost done with this cute little pansy painting today. So I hope you've enjoyed this, this um, quick demonstration. I hope you go and have some fun, and if you want to just uh, soften these edges, pick up your famous Rosemary & Co. brushes again, and you can soften an edge. As you can see, I hold lots of different brushes in my hand all at one time, and I'm losing my beautiful color, so I want to keep everything as clean as possible. And this has got just a touch of green in it. So I'm going to show that green on that. Wiggle my brush around. Now I've got some pretty color and beautiful little pansy. And maybe add a little bit of that color down here just for interest. And again, I think we're doing good. Maybe we'll add just a little splash of something here and here and maybe even add a touch of red just for fun. How about that for today? We just added all kinds of fun things into this adorable little painting. Hope you've enjoyed it and gotten some information as you're social distancing. Take this time to paint along and uh, have fun in your studio. Thanks a bunch.